Hello everyone, welcome to the channel Data Science with Harshit. So up till now we have seen how to set up a Python environment, how to work with Jupyter Notebooks and we have gone through the Python fundamentals for data science. Now it's time to look into specifics and in this particular video we are going to talk about the NumPy package. Now in the Python's data science stack there are many important libraries like NumPy, Pandas, data, uh, scikit-learn, TensorFlow, Keras. So we're going to go through each of those one by one. So for this video, we're going to cover the basics of NumPy package, which is the core library for scientific computing in Python. And in the next part of this particular series, we are going to cover the multidimensional array segment of the NumPy package. So if you haven't covered any of the basics, uh, I would highly recommend that you at least go through the Python fundamental series. Uh, you can find the link in the description below. So without any further ado, let's get started with NumPy. So as we can see, the NumPy package is the fundamental package for scientific computing with Python. It has this powerful n-dimensional array object, sophisticated functions, which is, and it's, since it's written in C, C++, we have advantages like uh, speed and memory. Now it's very useful for linear algebra, Fourier transform, and random number capabilities. So we're going to be benefited uh, a lot and it's going to make our work a lot more easier going forward. So, uh, and NumPy package is also the basis for the Pandas package and that makes it a lot more useful and important. So in this particular video, we are going to cover uh, the basics, a creation of array using NumPy, and then we're gonna look into indexing and slicing. Then moving forward, we're going to understand a few basic operations and then the universal functions. So uh, let's see uh, how the NumPy package works. So let's create a Python list first. Let's see, uh, all right, I have this A list. Let's put one comma five comma six comma seven comma, let's say a string, Harshad. All right, let's run this, okay. So I can also convert a Python list into a NumPy array. So let's do that. And before we are going to convert and use NumPy package, we first need to import it. So uh, import NumPy as NP. Now this is the convention. This is basically convention of importing NumPy package as NP. Now it's often abbreviated as NP. I mean like you can use any other abbreviation. But this is the convention. So importing NumPy as NP. All right, then uh, let's create a NumPy array. All right, and then uh, let's do NumPy dot array function and pass the list that we have all right run this okay it has run successfully now let's see what we have in np underscore arr so you see that you have an array all right then we have all the elements here and these all are converted to strings you can see whereas we defined integers in the python list and it has this date d type uh, less than u21. Now this less than u21 is basically u stands for Unicode and this number stands for the number of characters that it can take. So for my system, it, now this number would depend on the system that you have. So this is for 64-bit Mac OS and uh, this is my NumPy array object that I have created. Alright, so Basically, what we what we need to learn from this particular example is that the NumPy array often expects similar elements. So you can always uh, put in uh, the same type of element. That's the difference between Python list and the NumPy array. So let's define uh, an array. Uh, all right, uh, let's do np dot. This is another way of creating NumPy array. I can simply put uh, one comma three comma five comma six comma seven so this is my numpy array now run this and let's find out the type of this array 
So this is a numpy dot ND array object. Another attribute that this ND array object would have is the D type. So the D type is integer 64. So it basically my array contains all the integer elements. In case I have 5.0, so now if I run type again, type would be same. Now integer array D type is again in 6.64 and if we print array we will see that it has converted 5.0 to simply 5 now if i change it to 5 and run it again you see it has converted it to float 64 now if i see so all the elements have been converted to floating point numbers other attribute that we have is the size attribute to look at the size of the array that we have then you can also look at the shape of the array the shape basically shows the number of rows the number of columns that you have so i have uh, this multi-dimensional array is uh, contains only five rows and no columns so this is a one-dimensional array all right then in case you want to look at the dimension you also have this ndim parameter the attribute so this you can use so this is a one dimensional array we have only one dimension all right now in case you want to find out the max element or the min element of uh, uh, the array you can simply use arc max so this is the function that you can use so invoke this so basically for this particular array uh, this arg max uh, function gives me the index at which the highest element the maximum element is present so here uh, this is the fourth index 0 1 2 3 4 now you can see that uh, the indexing also uh, remains the same as it is on the python list so in case i want to access the third element so that would be arr of 2 so the third element is 5.5 so i have accessed the uh, third element and slicing also uh, remains the same so let's say i want to access all the elements between 1 and 3 now 3 again here also it is excluded so we are going to get the first and the second the index elements so 3 and 5.5 now i can also assign the numbers uh, to these indexes so let's say i want to put 10 comma 20 at these places so now if i look at the array so the array has now become 1 10 20 6 7 so first and second index have been assigned these values that we provided to so now let's look at a few basic operations and that we have uh, so first thing that we are going to do is uh, look at the vector addition so this is vector addition so let's say uh, i have one python list all right so i have let's say four comma zero then I have another list called A2 in which I have 0 comma 3 all right now let's say I add these two A1 plus A2 and run this and let's look at what we have in A3 you see the A3 list is basically all the elements so the elements of the two have been appended into just one so this is what I get whereas I wanted to add these two numbers respectively so I wanted to add 4 plus 0 and 0 plus 3 and that should be two elements in just one array which is 4 comma 3 uh, so let's look at let's try to convert these into numpy array first using np.array a1 and then converting a2 as well run this now now let's do a3 equals uh, a1 plus a2 and if we look at a3 now so you see it has returned 4 comma 3 which is what we needed so we needed of uh, the respective addition of uh, these elements uh, 4 plus 0 0 plus 3 this is basically the vector addition of uh, the two vectors uh, a1 and a2 all right now sim similarly 
we can also do a1 into a2 so if we take a look at this so you see this is the respective multiplication the product of these two 4 into 0 is 0 3 into 0 is 0 all right so another useful function is the dot product that we are going to use the number package uh, helps in a lot of linear algebra uh, and uh, vector calculation so let's see how let's create two different arrays np dot array all right pass in one comma two then create one more let's say this is two comma three and this is a2 now the numpy package let's res result of the dot product would be np so the numpy package has this dot function that you can use pass in the two vectors so a1 and a2 are my vectors run this and let's see what we have in result so we have 8 now the dot product is basically 1 into 2 plus 2 into 3 the respective product and they being added up so 1 into 2 plus 2 into 3 as is 2 plus 6 that is 8 so the dot product has been rightly calculated so now I can uh, also add a scalar to these vectors so I have my a1 so let's say I wanted to add a scalar number so let, let's say I want to add 2 uh, now if I do this so you see my a1 had 1 comma 2 and I added 2 so it added 2 to both the elements of uh, the a1 vector so it added 1 plus 2 is 3 2 plus 2 is 4 so if I add a scalar to a, a numpy array now that particular scalar gets added to each and every element of that particular array so we also have uh, a few universal functions now these universal functions for the numpy package are just simply mathematical functions that help us to evaluate and compute several complex uh, equations uh, of uh, various models that we are going to be working with so let's uh, see a few so let's create uh, another array arr np dot array all right let's put a few elements in this two four most common ones uh, is arr dot mean so if i want to calculate the mean of this array so this is 4.5 and similarly you can also look at max uh, so this is the max value similarly we have min as well in case you so arg max used to give us the index at which the maximum element is present max gives you the value itself then we have other functions like sine function cos function can function we have log function so let's see let's create another array let's say i have a1 and in this uh, let's say i add one i add uh, zero then i have numpy dot e so this is uh, e contains 2.71 then we have uh, let's say np dot e and raise it to the power two then e square e cube also let's add it there okay so this is my numpy array let's name it x then i have y which is simply np.log uh, computes x so let's see let's run this now if i look at y so you see it is calculating the log of all the elements present in my x numpy array now x contains one zero uh, this is e and this log is basically natural log so to the base e so np dot e is basically one so you see the value is 1.0 for the third element in my numpy array for one natural log log of one is basically zero so this is right no log of zero so this is why this is giving me this runtime warning divided by zero so that's why it has given me the result minus infinity then for uh, to uh, e square we have two for e cube we have three 
So this is how basically the log function works. Uh, another important function to plot these mathematical functions uh, and their results is the line space function. So the line space function basically gives us uh, you know regularly uh, spaced uh, numbers between a starting point of the sequence and the ending point. So let's say I add uh, um, let's say minus 1 to 1 and uh, I en enter the number of elements as 10. I want 10 numbers between minus 1 and 1. So what it gives me is gives me minus 1 minus 0 point. So these are the 10 numbers. So let's say uh, I want only 5. So from minus 1 minus 0 0.5 0 0 0.5 1 so this gives me regularly spaced numbers between the starting point and the ending point so this is my starting point minus 1 this is my ending point of the sequence and this is uh, how many numbers I need between these so I could also mention 50 here all right so so now what I need to do is let's pass on uh, 0 comma np dot e star 4 so I have provided these and I want like 50 numbers between these so let's run these so this is my x so I've created a few sample data points now for y uh, that is my np dot log of x now run this okay now import matplotlib in order to plot these uh, function so we want to plot our log function so this is log of x I have provided these data points so I have stored these uh, data points in my x variable so this is also an umpy array now let's see how the matplotlib works now if I give plt dot plot x comma y so when I run this now this is going to plot the log function uh, this is my log function so you can see it is going from 0 up till 4 because the last number was e raised to the power 4 and it is calculating the natural log so I have the numbers here and also you can see that you have 50 numbers so I have from 0 up till 50 these are the values that I'm getting so the 50th value is basically e raised to the power 4 that's where the number is here. So this is how I can plot uh, the mathematical function. So that was all about NumPy, the one dimensional array. So we've seen how NumPy package is faster, it is easier to work with, has all the features and functions uh, to do all the scientific computation that we are going to need. So if you found this video useful, do give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on all the upcoming videos, tutorials, uh, podcasts or anything about data science. And uh, in the next part, we are going to cover the multidimensional arrays. And the video is coming out soon, so stay tuned. And in case you have any suggestions, thoughts or anything that you want to uh, you know, convey, feel free to comment down below. And uh, up till the next video, stay tuned and keep learning data science with her.